We live in a world where so many people don't want to take responsibility. They want to push it off on somebody else. Anything goes wrong, I'm going to blame somebody else. Anything that needs to be done, I'm going to let somebody else do it. And we live around so many people for whom responsibility seems not to be a part of their lives. But you and I both know that we are responsible people. We must be responsible for ourselves. I can't save myself. You can't save yourself without God. That's not the point. But the point is that we certainly must Take care of ourselves. It's our job. It's how we live. And God says, you are responsible. Today, we continue our theme of standing in the gap by considering the idea that I need to stand in the gap for myself in other words, I need to make sure that the parts of my life that are weak, the parts of my life that are broken, the parts of my life that are in danger, that I fill that gap with something that will allow it to be whole. The idea of standing in the gap is the Old Testament when the children of Israel were coming back out of Babylonian captivity and they found the wall and it was all broken down. Now the wall in the Old Testament was important in those cities because that was their perimeter. That was their protection. And without a wall, they were left open. In fact, uh, it had a lot to do with the reputation. Oh, your people without a wall... And to come back and to see the wall broken down, they had lost who they were. We are standing in the gap for the walls that are broken, the pieces of the walls that are not functioning properly. And one of those is the wall of our lives. And you and I have a responsibility. The passage that was read for us 1 Timothy chapter 4, has Paul's attitude for standing in the gap for yourself as he tells it to Timothy. In fact, if you think about it, when, God, when Paul wrote to Timothy twice, his letters were filled with this kind of idea. He was telling him, you need to do these kinds of things. We learn about Timothy first in Acts Chapter 16, when Paul came into his town of Lystra and, and everybody in the town was reporting about this guy, this young man, Timothy. Now, we don't know how young he was, but it's likely that he was at least an older teen into his 20s, maybe. And Paul was hearing about this young man, and everybody gave a good report about him. And so Paul said, I'm going to take you with me on my mission trips. His father was a Gentile. His mother was Jewish. We learn in Timothy's writings also, when Paul wrote him, he said, I know about your faith, your sincerity. It was first in your grandmother, and it's also in your mother. In other words, he had been trained and taught well. And now Paul was going to take him under his shadow, and he was going to mentor him. And in all of this, he told Timothy, but you need to stand in the gap for yourself. Notice what he said is the attitude of standing in the gap. If I am going to stand in the gap for myself, and if you are for yourself, what does it mean? We look at the text. We start in verse 12. Number one, age is no excuse. Youth is no excuse. God wants us to stand in the gap for ourselves. And we expect that those of us who are older, we understand, and therefore, yes, I'll take responsibility for myself. 
but there are some people, there are some who are young in age who don't seem to think that they have much responsibility. Let me ask you, young people, especially if you are a child of God, if you've been immersed into Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, you might be in middle school, you might be in high school. Are you a Bible reader? Do you spend time trying to understand God at all? Do you come to Bible classes to help yourself learn even more? Are you willing to say, I'm old enough to take responsibility for my spiritual life even while living in the household of my parents who, like Paul, are mentoring me like Paul did to Timothy? But what about you? You're not too young to pray. You're not too young if you, for instance, make an allowance or you have a small job. You can be involved in the ministry of giving. There are so many things that you can do, just like was put on display when Cody got up and read Scripture. There are things that you can do. Youth is no excuse. You must stand in the gap for yourself. And if you're younger than that, You'd be thinking about being good. If you're in elementary school, you're in preschool, be good. Start learning what it means to be good and to honor your parents. And in that way, you're standing in the gap for yourself. The rest of us, we're not informing the need. We're just reminding the need of the responsibility that we have. If we don't take responsibility for ourselves, how can we expect the next generation to do that? Because they are watching us. They are seeing if we are standing in the gap for ourselves. And if we're not doing it, how are they ever going to learn? Youth, age is no excuse. Number two, pay attention. Keep your eyes open. Paul said, give attention to certain things. He talked about reading, there's scripture, exhortation, that's with other people, doctrine, that's understanding what God wants. Pay attention. If I'm going to stand in, gap for, in the gap for myself, I need to pay attention to me. I can't allow myself to be distracted and pulled off into things that are a problem. We're all struggling. We all have problems. We all have issues that we're working on. And the more that we pay attention, notice the triggers, notice the times, pay attention and stand in the gap so as not to be drawn into that. Number three, to stand in the gap takes the mentality that says, I am going to use every gift that I have. If I'm standing in the gap for myself, I'm using every gift. Paul said to Timothy, you have a gift that was given to you. Now, likely in this time of the miraculous working of God, he might be talking about a miraculous gift that Paul had been, or Timothy had been given. But it's also not just miraculous because he says the laying on of the hands of the eldership. You know what he's saying? You might have this spiritual gift in a miraculous way, but in the figure of their day, when the elders laid hands on them, it put them in the ministry. It put them to be responsible for a work. You've been tagged. You've been tapped to say, this is what you can do. Are you using your talents? Are you using your gifts? You're not standing in the gap for yourself. If you have a talent... And if you have a gift that you are withholding from the Lord, not just for yourself and for others, 
but for this church to be a thriving and acting bo active body of people using and helping with the talents that every single person has. If you're going to stand in the gap for yourself, you have to have this mentality. Again, you need to be able to meditate. To meditate. Maybe we get a bad impression of meditation because of Eastern religions. But the idea, if God says, I want you to meditate, what's he saying? I want you to dwell on these things. A great preacher that I had known growing up by reputation, and our whole brotherhood at that time knew it. And it was a man named Guy in Woods. I heard him say one time, he had been working for the Lord, preaching and teaching for 50 or 60 years. And he said, when I was young, I came across this passage and I just didn't understand it. And so he said, I just thought about it for all of these years. And he said, one morning when I woke up, it dawned on me what a possible answer might be. That wasn't miraculous. That was the fact that it was just in his head. He was thinking about it. He was mulling it over. He was considering it. He was seeking for an answer. And it, it came to him, not because of some outside miraculous source, but rather he was meditating. We come to conclusions about spiritual things when we meditate. And if I'm going to be standing in the gap for myself, I need to be one who meditates. And finally, I need to have the attitude that says, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to keep doing this from now on. I'm not in this for just a short time. I'm going to stand in the gap for the rest of my life. Now, the next question is, how are we going to do it? We have the right attitude. How now do we stand in the gap for ourselves? I looked up the word yourself in Scripture to see what God tells me about myself, what he tells all of us through that word, yourself. Here's what I found. Number one, present yourself. Give diligence to be approved before God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be diligent to present yourselves to God, approved. If I'm going to stand in the gap for myself, the first thing I have to do is present myself to God. And when I present myself to God, I say, God, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to be at your disposal. I'm ready to be your hands and arms and feet in this world. When I present myself, I am saying to God, God, will you use me? as I am presenting myself to you. Number two, show yourself to others that you are standing in the gap. Titus chapter 2 and in verse 7, Paul said, show yourself to be a pattern of good works. Others need to see that you and I are standing in the gap. For ourselves. Others need to see that we are doing what we can do. There are so many ways that we stand in the gap for others to see. Let me give you one right here in this room because time 
And again, I like to mention this. It is a joy to me, and I know it is to you, to hear children during worship. Oh, sure, they might cry out, they might get upset, they might make a little noise, uh, they might be distracting, or we might be distracting them is the case. But what are moms doing? What are dads doing? They're showing everybody how important it is for their children. We're standing in the gap for them we want to be involved with their lives. We want to show them what's important. If I'm going to stand in the gap for myself, I have to show everybody else that that's what I'm doing. Number three, I need to teach myself. Romans chapter 2 and in verse 21, Paul in chapter 1 has just told the Gentiles that they have failed they knew what was truth, and they didn't live by it. Chapter 2. And you Jews, you knew what was truth. You actually had a written law, and you didn't live by it. And then he turns right back at those Jews, and he says in verse 21, You who teach others, do you not teach yourself? You who say, you shall not lie. Do you lie? Sometimes we might be caught in the position of constantly trying to correct somebody else or help somebody else or teach somebody else. And what does Paul say to the Romans? He says, look, you need to teach yourself. Paul would say about himself that I keep control of my body, yes, or lest I too should become a castaway. In other words, I'm teaching myself just as much as I'm teaching somebody else. But I can't teach somebody if I'm not teaching me. I need to be one who can teach myself to follow the very things that I think others ought to be doing. Number four, I'm standing in the gap. When I, as Scripture teaches, keep yourselves pure. Do not partake in other men's sins, is what Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5 and verse 22. Keep yourself pure. Sometimes we get caught up in somebody else's problems. Sometimes we participate in somebody else's sins by allowing things to happen that we should not allow. Or sometimes we participate. If I'm going to stand in the gap for myself, I need to make sure that I keep myself pure. I need to make sure that I keep myself where I need to be while I'm also trying to help others. Now, 1 Timothy 4, verse 7. Paul said, Exercise yourself. Exercise yourself to godliness. Throughout this NCAA tournament, my favorite time of the year, every time a winning team is interviewed, they always seem to say the same thing. We worked hard. We didn't stop. We worked with each other. We practiced hard. Those are the kinds of things that they say every single time. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy. Exercise. In other words, we need to practice being godly. 
Think about that. Practice being godly. No, we're supposed to be godly. I understand that. But sometimes we're not. So we need to figure out a way to practice being that way. It occurs to me that times like these is a good practice session. Because it's easy in here. It's easy to be influenced while we're here because this is where good people are. But it's practicing here, doing it here, and then we get out there where it's difficult and we face the time and we face the situation. It's the practice. It's the practice that makes that work. Finally, as Paul said at the last verse of our text, you got to save yourself. I know I said earlier, you can't save yourself. Well, I can't save myself without God. But guess what? God won't save me without me. God's not going to just reach down and say, oh, well, I don't care what you've done. You're saved. It's not going to happen. I know there's a teaching like that, but that is not true. Scripture does not bear that out in any way. So while I can't save myself without God, God will not save me without me. I save myself by participating in my salvation, taking responsibility for the fact that I must stand in the gap. We know the attitudes. We know what God said of how to do it. Two final thoughts when we do. When we stand in the gap for ourselves, we will be constructed well on a good foundation to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Jude closed out his book with the idea in that little letter when he said, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. The wall of our faith that secures our spiritual life because that's what it is. Our faith is our wall like the wall that the Jews rebuilt when they came back from Babylon. It is the wall that secures our spiritual life. It is my faith. And therefore Jude says, building yourself up on that most holy faith. Because while I'm standing in the gap of the wall of my life, I'm building, constantly building, a protective wall around my soul. And finally, number two, 1 Peter 4, verse 1. Christ suffered in the flesh for us. Arm yourselves with the same mind. When I am standing in the gap for me, I will be armed for the fight at the wall when they were building that wall, there was an enemy that tried to stop them. Didn't want them to succeed. Nehemiah tells us that he arranged things so that the workers had next to them their weapons. For a while, some held weapons while others worked. For a while, they worked with one hand held weapons in the other because they were armed for the fight while standing in the gap at the wall. That's us. The fight is out there. We're being attacked. There are people who don't want us to succeed. The devil wants to defeat us. And we are standing in the gap, building the wall of faith around our spiritual lives. And if I will do that and I will construct it and I will be armed to face the fight that's coming, I can't do it 
if I don't take responsibility. Today, I'm responsible. You are responsible. It comes down to your decision. It comes down to my decision. We are each responsible for ourselves. Jesus paved the way. He made the way. He opened the way. He said, I am the way. When I take responsibility to listen to his call, come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden. The wall is broken. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. We can rest in the faith of God. We can rest in the wall surrounding our souls if we are standing in the gap for that wall. Today, if you've not taken Jesus on in your life, He's not the Lord of your life because you've not invited Him in. You do that when you submit to the waters of baptism in which... We meet the saving blood of Jesus and he brings you into his kingdom. Or maybe taking responsibility for yourself to be faithful, to commit, to say I'm all in. As we stand in the gap for ourselves, it's now our responsibility while we stand together.